Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 11. So this time our main focus is going to be the gun mechanic. So we want to be able to click our mouse button and be able to fire our weapon with a muzzle flash and a shot sound. So the idea of how we're going to do this is we're going to bring in a muzzle flash texture, we're going to animate it, combine it with a gun, combine it with um, a sound effect and then create a script to allow us to do everything together. So to get this in motion, what we need to do first is let's import into our textures folder the muzzle flash. So I'm going to drag and drop this texture straight into here. And as I always say, you can get this on the website for free. Download an asset section, survival horror, episode 11. So what we'll do is we'll attach this to a plane. So let's head over to our M9 weapon, <clears throat> our pistol just here. Uh, for convenience, I'm going to turn the canvas off so it doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to turn the M9 object on. So let's bring in a plane to do this. So game object and 3D object and plane right there. Let's change this to about 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 and rotate about 90 degrees on the X. There we go. Uh, drag and drop the flash onto there. That looks like me to rotate it the other way. Um, rotate it around on the Z. So 180, there we go. And what we need to do is because we can still see the black around it, we need to change the shader type from standard. If we go to particles and go to additive. <clears throat> we need to make sure we do have additive here because the way we're going to animate it, if we click this little arrow here, we need to use this tint color to do so. Now what you need to do is just quickly align it up roughly to where the gun is and how you would want to see the muzzle flash. So I'm going to say about there, press play and have a quick look. So yeah, it's pretty much okay there. So now what we do is let's animate it. And the way I'm going to do it is if we go to our animations folder, click animation, click on create, and let's call this muzzle anim and press record. So we're going to do this over the course of probably half a second. So that's going to be 30 frames because we're working at 60 frames a second. So at zero, our keyframe, I want to have the tint color as literally nothing so we can see straight through. So then by about the 10th frame, we want it full so we can see. So you can see the idea of what's happening here is very quickly, this muzzle flash is showing. And then by, oh, I've set that as frame 101. Let's change that to frame 10. So we just drag it along here to about there, I think. Ah, so there's frame 10 right there. And by the 30th frame, I want it to be completely dissipated again. So gone. And then press the record button. And we're going to leave the animator as that. We're not going to change it to animation. So if we press play, we should be able to see our muzzle flash. That's how it's going to work, at least for now. You can obviously take a bit more time on it, work a bit, maybe work with the transform data in the animation to make it kind of increase, decrease, or whatever. It's entirely up to you, but this is the general way that you can get this going. So if we head back to our project, right click and rename, let's call it muzzle flash. And inside that, I'm going to add in a light source, point light. I'm going to change it to kind of a dark orangey kind of color, about there maybe. Yeah, about there. And reduce the range to about five, but increase the intensity to about two. Just so it kind of makes it a little bit brighter in the immediate area. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to drag this muzzle flash object onto our M9 object because we want it to be permanently attached to the gun itself, but we don't want to necessarily control the animation from the gun itself. It can cause a little bit of uh, a bit of a problem, especially if you're trying to run two animations at once. Um, what I will do actually before we do that 
is t untick loop time, so it only plays once, just to be on the safe side. So drag and drop muzzle flash onto our pistol. And there we go. And next thing we'll do is let's import the sound object. So in our audio effects folder, let's bring in pistol shot. And in the effects here, I'm going to duplicate bang sound, rename it to, uh, let's have it as fire pistol, and drag and drop the audio. So we have all the mechanics in place that we need. Now we need to control them via the script. So let's head to our scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script, fire pistol. And let's open up in Visual Studio. So within this script, we're going to do uh, two methods. One's going to be update, and another one is going to be our customized one using an I enumerator, because we need to control the time in which this script is running. We don't need start, and we don't need any notes, so they can be deleted. We do, however, need four variables. The first one is going to be a game object, and it's going to be the gun itself, so the gun. Next one is going to be the muzzle flash. Uh, so public game object muzzle flash semicolon next one is going to be that audio sound of the gun firing so public audio source and um, we'll call it gun fire next one we're going to use a bool because we need to know if it's true or false if our weapon is firing by default it's going to be false but when we do fire our weapon, we need to set this as true so as we can't repeatedly fire at every single frame. Public bool is firing. And I say by default, it'll be false. So what's going to happen here is we need to take a look at what button we want to fire the gun. So usually it's something like the left mouse button. So if we go back to Unity, go to Edit, Project Settings and Input, you can see here we have something called fire one now this name refers to these buttons here either the left control on the keyboard or mouse zero and mouse zero is a reference to the left mouse button so using fire one means that either of those two can be pressed and we'll be able to fire the weapon so if we go back to our script and put if get button down oh sorry input of course input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes fire one and close bracket and open curly bracket and obviously if you want a different button that isn't already set you would just need to set that up in your um section here you just need to change the size to one above whatever it is and much like we did with this action button you just add in whatever button you want to be able to fire the weapon with. Once we've checked if we're pressing the button or not, we then need to check if the weapon is already firing or not. So if is firing equals, that's double equals, remember, false, then do the following. And that's going to be a coroutine because that's where the I enumerator comes in. Start coroutine. Let's call it firing pistol open close bracket close bracket semicolon so this close curly bracket is a reference to here this one closes this if statement and this one closes the method so the next one is going to be i enumerator and it was called firing pistol open close bracket open curly bracket <clears throat> So the sequence of events that we're going to use here is quite precise. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we can't fire the weapon again. And that means changing the is firing variable to true. Is firing equals true. Semicolon. Next, we want to play the pistol shot. The gun dot get component animation in the spiky brackets remember open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of whatever is attached to our m9 so in this case pistol shot 
And since we're here at this point, let's just make sure our size is actually set as one and play automatically is unticked because we don't want it to play as soon as it becomes active. So let's head back to the script now. And it is pistol shot semicolon. Next thing we need to do is set that muzzle flash active. Muzzle flash dot set active is true. Semicolon. Uh, next thing we need to do is play the audio sound. Gun fire dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon. Now this is where we have to wait for I'm gonna say half a second because the actual animation of the muzzle flash lasts half a second, so we can do it that way. So let's have yield, return, new, wait for seconds, 0.5 F. Remember the F, it's because it's a, um, it's a decimal here. It's a float. And then after we've waited for half a second, let's set the is firing back to false so we can refire over again. Is firing equals false, semicolon. So that basically resets the entire process. Now this yield wait for seconds here, it's all dependent on how often you want to be able to fire the weapon. At this point, I can fire the weapon twice within one second. That may be too much, it may be too little, but it's where playtesting comes into play. So it just, it depends how you want your game to play out. So let's save that script there, head back to Unity, and hopefully we have no errors. Perfect, nothing. So I'm gonna attach the fire pistol script onto the M9. Now you don't have to have it attached to the M9, the reason I'm doing it is because I only want the script to be active when we have hold of the weapon, i.e. when the weapon is on the screen, because we don't want to be able to fire the weapon if it doesn't exist on the screen. So it, this script will only become active when the weapon becomes active. You could theoretically add it to another object, but you'd have to make sure that that object also becomes active when your pistol becomes active. So the gun is going to be the M9. Muzzle flash will be the muzzle flash and gunfire will be the fire pistol. So at this point, let's turn our muzzle flash off up here and let's press play. So let's wait for this little sequence to end. There we go. And hopefully. So, yep, what's happening here is it's a case of the muzzle flash um it's kind of not resetting the animator um, as and when it needs to so let's try adding something in here let's have um two lines of code let's try this out so this is a little bit of trial and error so let's have puzzle flash dot get component animator dot enabled equals false and then let's re-enable it in the same frame just out of curiosity to see if anything different does happen and save the script head back to unity and press play in fact while i'm here i'll actually put the canvas back on there we go so let's see if this works now nope so that doesn't help it at all. So I think what we're going to have to do is actually control it via um, animation. So let's uncouple muzzle flash. So let's bring it as, as its own object within the hierarchy. And let's add component, animation, and let's have the muzzle anim into there. And change the size to one, untick play automatically. Uh, muzzle anim straight into there and remove the animator right click remove component muzzle anim debug legacy normal wrap mode once and then reattach muzzle flash into m9 and then if we go back to the script what we can do instead is change this one here so muzzle flash dot get component, change that to animation 
and have that as dot play in brackets and quotes muzzle anim and save and hopefully we should have no more problems and everything should work oh uh okay so it's saying unexpected symbol gunfire um oh, of course i missed off the uh semicolon at the end there my fault so there we go the script should be in working order now so let's press play and check it out ready and here we go so you can see there we go and you can see i'm clicking rapidly with my mouse but i can still only fire at that interval because that bull is preventing us from firing our weapon so as i say there's many different ways that you can piece together a muzzle flash and this is just one of them and it's up to you how you want to work with that animation whether you want it to dissipate or maybe add in some particle effects and to be honest I like particle effects, I like working with them, so we may actually add in that at some point. So next episode, what I want to do is carry on with our zombie over there. We've got mechanics to fire our weapon, so let's get our zombie coming towards us and let's uh, have ourselves able to have some ammunition to fire at him. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.